Hi, in this video I'm going to do a beginner's guide to bonds. Now if you've ever thought about investing or saving any spare cash you may have, you've probably come across the word bond. And you may have become rather confused because this word is used to describe a big range of very different financial products. So in this video I'm just going to take a quick look at the different types of bond and hopefully you'll be a bit less confused at the end. So I'm going to start with fixed rate bonds or cash bonds. And these are basically savings accounts. And the only difference from an instant access savings account is you're tying your money up for a set period of time, maybe two, three, five years. And over that period, you'll get a guaranteed fixed interest rate. So it could be, say, 3% a year for the next five years. And that's quite appealing. Fixed rate bonds are very safe. You won't lose your money or almost certainly won't lose your money. And you've got that guaranteed rate. You'll be able to plan ahead knowing how much money is coming in. The only downside, well, there's two downsides. One is the interest rates on offer are very low. And two, if interest rates in the wider economy start to rise, as they probably will, then you might in three years time be a bit fed up if you were stuck on a fixed rate bond paying 2% a year, let's say, or when an instant access account is perhaps paying, say, 4% a year. So that's fixed rate bonds. Then the next kind we've got are UK government bonds. Or gilts. And gilts, if you buy gilt, you're basically lending money to the government and you get an IOU in return. So the government's always launching new gilts. So let's imagine next week you went and bought a newly issued gilt from the government. You might be a 25 year term paying a 3% uh, return. So if you invested £1,000 in this new gilt, you'd get £30 a year for the next 25 years. That's 3% on £1,000. And then at the end of the 25 years, you get your £1,000 back. Now, if 25 years seems like a long time, you could sell your guilt early. And you can do that on the financial markets very easily. And, but your big thing is, the big problem, is you won't necessarily get your original investment back. And that's because the price of guilt moves around from day to day, just like stocks and shares. So if you bought guilts now worth £1,000 in three years' time, you might be able to sell them for £1,050 if the value goes up, or the value might fall and you might say only get £900 for your guilts. Um, now, I think normally guilts are seen as very, very safe. But right now, I think there's a big argument not to buy them, and that's because the current prices for guilts look very high. And so there's a big chance if you bought gilts now, their value will be lower in three or four years time. The value will fall on the markets. But on the plus side, you get that guaranteed return for a long period of time, maybe 25, maybe even 50 years, and you'll get your money back at the end of the period. Now the next type of bond is the corporate bond. And these are very similar to gilts, except they're issued by individual companies. Once again, they're traded on the markets and their value goes up and down from day to day. Now, corporate bonds traditionally pay a higher return than gilts, and that's because they're seen as higher risk than gilts. You know, traditionally, if you said, compare Tesco and the British government, which is more likely to go bust? Well, you'd normally say Tesco, so you get a higher return on your Tesco corporate bond. Now, these days, that's perhaps a bit more debatable. Maybe the UK government is actually riskier than Tesco's. We could argue about that. But the traditional view is Tesco is riskier, therefore you get a higher return. And there are other companies out there which are obviously much riskier than Tesco, much higher risk of them going bust. So you get a higher return if you lend to those higher risk companies. And it's become much easier to buy and sell corporate bonds thanks to something called the ORB, which is run by the London Stock Exchange. So you can find out more about that on the London Stock Exchange website. Next kind of bond is the with profits bond or investment bond. 
Strictly speaking, investment bond also covers some other kinds of bonds, but they're all pretty much the same with profits bonds, investment bonds. They were very popular back in the 60s and 70s. They're now largely discredited. Uh, the charges are too high. The performance has been very disappointing. If anyone tries to sell you a with profits bond, steer clear, put your money somewhere else, don't go near them. And then the last kind of bond is the mini bond. These are a new innovation. Uh, they're similar to corporate bonds, um, but they've been typically um, issued by smaller, newer companies or organizations that aren't companies like the Jockey Club. Um, the thing about mini bonds is you're normally tied in for a term of often of three years and you won't be able to sell your bond at all until the bond matures in say three years time. A lot of mini bonds have been paying quite high rates of return, often around 6%, which looks great at the moment. But I think some private investors may have been investing in mini bonds because they want the higher rate and they haven't appreciated how risky some of these mini bonds can be. You know, a small young company is more likely to go bust. And if that happens, you won't get your money back. So that's a quick overview of the five main types of bond. Um, I'll be looking at gilts and corporate bonds in more detail in future videos, but hopefully I've just made the whole area a bit less confusing. And uh, so I hope to see you in the next video.